Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Brickmania TV. I'm Dan Siskind. And I am Landon Reimer. So today we have a very special episode for you. We have this Vietnam layout on display. Sure, we've, we've Brickmania put together this, uh, this display about three, four years ago. Um, so I'll just take a minute to, to run through it because people are, you know, if you have, unless you've been to, to Brickmania Toy Works or one of the, sh one of the shows, not recently, um, you probably have never seen this before. So um, this being this month, this actually this, you know, last week was the 50th anniversary of the U.S. involvement, beginning of the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. Um, so, and that has a huge legacy. The Vietnam War, of course, the U.S. was involved for many, many years. There's many uh, casualties, very controversial. Um, so we'll, we'll go through uh, this display. It was, it's not really a specific battle. It's a little bit of everything going on, just trying to give a, an overview of the Vietnam War. Start with right in front of me. Um, you basically have an LZ, a helicopter. Um, the helicopter was the chief uh, vehicle to get troops uh, into battle. Basically, they, the whole concept of air cavalry started um, at, and was used for the first time in the Vietnam War. Um, basically, you land your troops in, vertical envelopment, they called it. Land your troops in, scour the area, look for the enemy, search and destroy, and then when you're all done, you can evacuate or evacuate your wounded um, by helicopter. It's a whole new concept rather than being stuck uh, in one spot by the land. So in the front, we have the landing zone. We have a... In the middle, we have a Vietnamese village, and the camera can zoom in and see some of the details in the village. We have the Viet Cong, the VC guerrillas, hiding in the village. Uh, not, every, uh, not every villager, not every village was friendly to the U.S. or friendly to the, the, the communist guerrillas, but it was, uh, that was what made the war so difficult. It was hard to detect who was on whose side. Um, down in front, you might find some uh, famous movie uh, character. That we sneak in. We like to do that stuff in, the, in, in our dioramas. Uh, over on the left side, in front of Landon here, is uh, we, it's, we call it Saigon. Uh, it's just represented, representative of the, the urban areas of Vietnam. Um, there is a pagoda, which, you know, Viet, Vietnam is a uh, predominantly Buddhist nation, so there'd be pagodas. Some other details, we have a UH-1C attack helicopter. It's a, it's a smaller Huey. This was uh, uh, heavily armed. When the Hueys, the, the, the troop carrying Hueys would go into a, a landing zone, they definitely have some uh, vulnerabilities to ground fire. So they made attack versions that could basically orbit around, look for uh, enemy uh, activity, and then neutralize it, to protect the other he helicopters and the, and the troops on the ground. Um, we have a bunch of vehicles. Many of these have been uh, of kits of uh, Brickmania previously. Uh, some of them are current. The helicopters are current. Uh, down there in the front, we have a PBR-1 uh, patrol boat, uh, just the same boat that you maybe was famous in Apocalypse Now. M1 or M41 Walker Bulldog tank, M35 gun truck, another deuce and a half truck here with an M102 howitzer, M113 uh, personnel carrier, A cab. This is basically fitted out with the stickers that came with the uh, um, the Huey uh, add-on pack, and then we have an M. Uh, M42 Duster. This is a twin 40-millimeter uh, cannon, um, anti-aircraft gun, but was used really effectively against ground targets in the, in the Vietnam War because there really was no aircraft activity in the south of Vietnam where the U.S. troops were uh, were based. Um, any anything you want to? Oh, point the out? the tunnels in the front I thought were a pretty cool detail. Oh yeah. So, you know, the in this in another part of the war was that the the Americans had overwhelming superiority in in, in ground combat. So it was largely a, a guerrilla war. In the south, the guerrillas basically dug tunnel networks, and a lot of times even right up to or underneath U.S. bases. Um, and that's what's represented, represented in this one. They, they could not show themselves during the day because the Americans and the South Vietnamese allies had such overwhelming firepower that they wouldn't dare show themselves. Yep. Um, hopefully, now that this has been updated, cleaned up, uh, it'll be on the road again. And you can come out and see it. We'll let you know where it's going to be. Yeah, looks really cool in person, so check it out if you can. Yep. So with that said, uh, I guess we should get on with some of the business uh, we have in Business hand. stuff. All right. We have some restocks, right? Sure. Cool. Well, you start it out. So the first restock we have is the M4 Sherman. Extremely popular kit. Um, got another batch made. Yes, we. This is this is uh, one of the most popular models Brick has ever done. Yep. Sherman's always hugely popular, and this one particular one, and uh, it has really cool features. 
like Mania track links. Yeah, the double wide track links. Yep. Uh, Rick Arms M2HB, a custom uh, pad printed tanker. Yep. Um, it's it's not like our, our our most fancy model, but it has all the basics at a nice price. Yeah. Um, and in case uh, your Sherman's feeling a little uh, get a little superiority complex, <laughs> Sherman, we still have some Tigers left. Yep. So if you wanna you know if you don't want to buy three or four or eight Shermans, you could buy one Tiger, get the job done. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, and a new release, we have World War II French Infantry decals. Um, there's five guys that you can make with this pack, so it's a nice army builder. And this is the early war French Infantry. Okay. Right? It's a classic. Yep. Classic. Before the capitulation. Yes. <laughs> what else next up, so there are three packs by Brick Arms. So it is a zombie defense pack with a brand new uh, printed face. And a whole assortment of apocalypse-themed weapons, I guess. So this is an actual citizen brick zombie head too. Oh, is it? It's oh, not nice. Just, it's yeah, not, I didn't notice that. Yeah. So that's that was cool. Yeah, that was a nice add-on. So citizen brick. If you don't know, they make some of the highest quality uh, pad-printed accessories. Uh, we use them in some Brickmania models. Uh, yep. um, we recommend their stuff. Always good, good stuff. products. Cool. Next up is a World War II weapons pack, and it's kind of a a, a general assortment of uh, allied and Axis stuff. So a really good starting point. Yep. You know, if you if you don't know where to go to start your armies, that's got a little bit of everything. We'd get you started if you're doing like some stop motion. Everything you would need is in yeah. that pack. Yeah. All right, and finally we have a new sci-fi pack. So again, another uh, assortment of just space weaponry. So a lot of it's made up, uh, not by you know. It's like sci-fi. You it's might cool recognize stuff. it. Some might video recognize games. It. Some uh, can neither confirm nor space, deny. Space war, space themed ring. movies. <laughs> And there's a Chrome Classic ray gun in there, which is super cool. So yeah. Check that out. Yeah, we tried to order some of those for our store recently, and they somehow weren't available. And I think oh, I know I why, because why. they're all in the sci-fi packs now. It's pretty cool. Hasn't been a new sci-fi pack from Brick Arms in years. Yep. And the selection in this one is way cooler than anything previous. So another, another uh, new release, uh, actually re-released this week, we're bringing back the Japanese Type 92 yep. uh, mountain gun. With a figure. Gun. Yep. And with, to go with that, we have a... Oh, it's, it's actually... Um, the fig figures are on sale, actually, right now. Yep, Japanese... To go with that, yeah. Yep, Japanese uh, Type infantry. 100 yep. infantry. So, pad printed with a Brick Arms Type 100 and olive pot helmet. Yep, and he's, just, he's marked down to go with your, uh, your, your Type 92 uh, mountain gun. Cool. Uh, I guess we do have a couple of, uh, yeah. couple of specials. Um, I guess I'll just hold them up. Camera guy can zoom in on them maybe at some future point. Um, but we're having, a, just because we're talking about the Vietnam War diorama, we're going to be doing a bulk Vietnam War special. Um, some items that you would find uh, if you're making your own Vietnam War diorama. We have the AK assault rifle, boonie hat, M16 rifle, and M60 machine gun. We use all of these in this, in this diorama here. Uh, if you want to make your own, it's a good time to do it. And also going along with this Vietnam theme, we have a BOGO special on decals. It's buy one, get one free on these decals. So it's good for North Vietnamese Army, um, just American infantry, an M60 gunner, a Viet Cong soldier, and a complete Tiger Stripe decals. Yeah, Tiger Stripe is, is the full uniform, so you only get uh, one guy, but it's, you know, it's, it's a really cool figure. Yeah, he's cool. Um, I think that's it for new releases. That's it for business. Uh, we do still have our M113 yep. special going on. It's not a special, it's a contest. Contest. Yeah, we want you to pimp your M113. I think <laughs> that's the inappropriate term to use. Uh, <laughs> um, so that's still going to happen. It's a $100 gift yep. card, $100 gift certificate for the web store or the, our store at the Mall of America. Heck, we'd even take it at one of the events that we uh, have our, our uh, uh, display set up at. Um, there are some other displays coming up, too. So. We will be at Cantini Park coming up mid-December. We'll have some information on that. And then we'll be going to Brick Fair, Alabama mid-January. So look for uh, more information on that and other upcoming events that Brick Mania will be going to. And of course, in February, Valentine's weekend is World War Brick. Where? Anaheim. Anaheim. Anaheim, California. So that's kind of like the, the great escape. <laughs> if you live in a cold place like us, you can't wait to go to California in February. So um, we'll all be there. Um, that's our big, uh, we don't have any hard time finding volunteers at Brickmania to come to uh, World War Brick. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. Uh, we have a great time, lots of games. This is where Brickmania 
and Brick Arms and GI Brick, we get together, we control everything about this convention, so we get to play all the fun games that we want to play, have all the displays that we want to display. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 all the cool stuff, none of the crap. <laughs> all the cool stuff, none of the crap, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so check it out. Yeah, check it out. Do you have anything else to add? I got nothing. All right, I guess that we're done with episode 15. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. Yep. Thank you for watching. Yep. This is the tank. This is actually the world's first tank. Um, it was made in 1776. It's a very famous date. It's when the world's first tank was made. One thing that's very unique about this tank is actually that it shoots. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but most tanks actually do not shoot. So this thing is cool. So it actually has two guns, three guns actually. But again, they don't do anything. Here we have a 1983 um, M4 Sherman made in 1983 when Nazi 2 took over Germany. So Nazi 2 was similar to Nazi 1, but completely different than Nazi 3. So the Department of Defense created the Browning full automatic gun in order to shoot bullets. There was an extreme, extreme overproduction of bullets in 1983. The world's first tank actually shot entire guns out of its barrel. I think you're, you're still recording, no? No. Oh, here we go.